The Filtvelt Coalition is a curious new state on the edge of the periphery, which I think stands as a symptom of an increasingly obvious flaw in gigantic spacefaring civilizations that extend hundreds or thousands of light years across. Much like with the decline of the Western Roman Empire, back when humans were confined to the continents of Terra, the limits of available technology create a perilous situation for expansive empires. It's a trap, of course, because we know that empires have to grow. But as they grow, they become increasingly difficult to manage due to the limits of technology and the fact that time is linear. Rome was limited by the speed of a horse and a ship, and the great houses of the inner sphere are limited by HPG networks and jump ship speed. The chaos and lack of communication that resulted from the word of Blake kerfuffle in the 3060s and 3070s impacted those on the edge of settled territory first. Setting aside for a moment the direct attacks by Blakists, people from planets well outside the core House Davion worlds, started to feel the impact, or more accurately, the lack of impact from a government that was simply incapable of performing its expected duties. The most obvious and impactful for the peoples of the Broken Wheel combat region of Davion space was the rampant rampage carried out by pirate units who no longer faced any possible Davion retribution for their actions. It was perfectly reasonable for people on these planets to become disenchanted with a government that was unwilling or unable to intervene to protect its citizenry. Is it any wonder that they sought more localized solutions and control over their destinies? On February 20th, 3072, the coalition of 20 planets, including Filtvelt, Gillingham, Broken Wheel, and Mararn, broadcast their Declaration of Independence from the Federated Suns. It read, Today, the 20th of February, will be known hereafter as Freedom Day. On this day, we, the free worlds of the Filtvelt Coalition, sever our allegiance to and dependence on the Federated Sons and stand alone as a new nation against these dark times. It is only after long and earnest discussion that we take this bold step forward. While we do not wish to sever all ties to House Davion and the Federated Sons, we need the crown on New Avalon to understand that we will no longer tolerate the status quo. We hope to reunite with our interstellar parent at some point in the future, but for the good of the people, we cannot stand back and wait. We take this step as a matter of principle. The ruling house of the Federated Sons has a duty to protect all of its citizens and provide safety, opportunity, and freedom. Sadly, for the past five years, we, the listed worlds below, have been neglected despite our pleas for assistance. Therefore, to stand against the increasingly violent and disruptive war that the Tortuga Dominions has declared upon these worlds, and to protect against Tauran aggression, we must do what is right and honorable. The statement continues, outlining that all armed forces of the Federated Sons on the newly independent planets should hand over their assets to this new government. The Davion personnel were also invited to resign their commissions with the AFFS and join the forming Filtvelt Defense Army. It announced the intent to roll all the planetary militias into this new army as well. Wrapping up the declaration, it reads, Today is the dawning of a new day in the Filtvelt Coalition. May we continue to stand against the dark tide of our enemies and hold a light to others who feel abandoned by their leaders. Viva la Coalition! Of course, just declaring independence was the first step. Just a few weeks after this proclamation, the very real challenge of Blakists and pirate attacks continued to intensify. Councilman Eduardo Longshore stated, Now that we are independent, we must immediately begin addressing the many problems that affect our daily lives after decades of Davion neglect. One of Filtvelt's first actions was the institution of what they described as an enlistment quota which for all intents and purposes was a draft across the coalition planets to bolster the fledgling defense army. Support from the citizenry was strong, as most understood that the Word of Blake attacks were not going to stop until they were met with violent force. Attacks from pirates were not new, of course, but a planet that could respond to them effectively and with deadly force was less likely to be a target in the future. The biggest issue moving forward was the lack of heavy military equipment, including battle mechs. So while the local planetary militias were at full strength with personnel, they could not do much against a well-equipped foe. In order to bolster their strength, the Filtvelt Coalition hired a mercenary unit known as the Thumpers to partially supplement the need for more potent weaponry. The Thumpers were originally formed as a parade unit to demonstrate the assault mechs being produced by Defiance Industries. They did see some action, but ultimately it was decided to end the funding for it. 
Rather than disbanding, the Thumpers bought out their gear and struck out on their own. After working contracts with the Lyran Commonwealth, Russell Hogg, and with the Edisich Motors, the mercenary unit ended up moving out into the Torin Concordat territory. They worked there until 3069 when the Thumpers accepted a contract with the Filtvelt Military Academy. They were able to work with the Academy Training Battalion as pirate hunters. This working relationship with the Filtvelt Coalition continued through the Word of Blake kerfuffle and the Dark Age era as it was dawning. The Thumpers settled down officially and became core of the Filtvelt's defense army. By 3085, the Filtvelt Coalition was holding its own for the most part. Four planets did end up returning to the fold of House Davion, though usually in exchange for lavish trade deals and handouts. The tiny periphery state benefited from its remote location and the fact that House Davion had much bigger fish to fry and didn't need to send military forces to come crush some wayward backwater planets. A leader who went by Marques Tremplelou was extremely popular during the Blakist kerfuffle years and after. Steady leadership went far in addressing issues and facing down external pirate threats. Seeking allies in this endeavor of beating the pirates back, Filtvelt developed relations with the Periphery March planets, the Franck Reaches, and even the Raven Alliance. Seeking to capitalize on every bit of industrial power possible, the Filtvelt expanded industrial mech production and sought to improve both jobs for local citizens and retrofit some of those mechs for defensive purposes. For example, the Cow Boeing plant was running 24-7 by the mid-3080s. Some of those industrial mechs were then used as exports and trade deals with other nearby periphery nations. Even though House Davion hasn't taken any direct military action against the Filtvelt Coalition, there has been pressure placed on it in other ways. As previously mentioned, the economic pressure and even offers of lucrative trade deals lured a few planets back into the fold. The establishment of the Periphery March Guard was a direct challenge to the claim that the region had been abandoned by House Davion. Their headquarters was even deliberately placed near the Filtvelt Coalition to emphasize the point. By 3130, the future was looking grim for the fledgling periphery state. The coalition had shrunk down to just seven planets. With every lost planet, the remaining citizenry became more convinced that it would be just a matter of time before House Davion swept in and finally ended this experiment at self-rule. History would spare the Filtvelt Coalition, as House Davion would soon have much bigger fish to fry. John Joseph Gardner was born in 3078 on Amerlund during the final gasps of the Blakist kerfuffle. As the son of a farmer, Gardner appreciated the value of hard work and became a lifelong patriot who believed strongly the coalition had a future. Going into public service, Gardner was elected repeatedly to various local positions. He was both capable and determined, and by 3111, he was elected Maryland's planetary governor. His supporters saw him as a tireless advocate for their interests and someone who would work hard without rest to solve problems like unemployment and poor living conditions. In 3138, John Joseph Gardner was elected Prime Minister of the Filtvelt Coalition, replacing Berto Okiki. Running on the platform that emphasized independence, but also reminding people that they shared a strong connection with the peoples of House Davion, one of his first acts as Prime Minister was to establish an educational exchange program with nearby Davion worlds, in order to build connections for the future. As it turned out, those connections would be tested in 3144 when the Draconis Combine invaded House Davion space in a devastating series of strikes that would very nearly lead to the collapse of the once great house. Gardner could have capitalized upon the weakness of House Davion by going on the offensive and retaking planets for Filtvelt. However, he chose instead to send his modest military forces across the border in order to hit Combine forces in rear action strikes to slow their advance. Banking on this act of solidarity with the Davions, it's possible that Filtvelt could find itself in a much more favorable position when dealing with them in the future. That will depend on House Davion's ability to recognize the fledgling periphery state as a friend rather than an annoyance that can be swept from history with a few battalions of Battlemex. The military of Filtvelt is split into three units called Citizens Militias. They're normally based throughout the coalition in order to respond quickly to pirate incursions. Reports have shown mixed results against pirates, as a lack of heavy equipment and inexperienced soldiers have hindered their fighting capabilities. However, these soldiers are fighting for their homes, and they aren't at risk of being stationed on some far-flung planet due to an expansive house bureaucracy, so that must be factored into their capabilities. I'm going to root for the Filt Belt Coalition moving forward, and I hope they stick around. Plus, I understand that their mechs and vehicles are typically painted orange, which is fun. 
there aren't enough orange battle mix. If you enjoyed this little video, make sure you use that free action, hit the like and subscribe buttons. If you didn't enjoy it, hit them out of spite anyway. Thank you to the Ko-Fi subscribers and YouTube members who go above and beyond to directly support this nonsense. I appreciate it. Take care and go make the world a slightly better place today and tomorrow.